The only thing that I could see reversing this trend would be through the International Monetary Fund that the United States and the conglomerate of countries that comprise the IMF come out with a Western gold-backed digital currency before the BRICS do. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for February 21st through February 28th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature 2022 Silver Maples at $3.40 over spot. Silver Maples were the first silver sovereign coins to be minted at 4 nines fine purity and remain one of the most in-demand and recognized coins today. They come 25 to a tube, 500 to a box, and are available at the lowest premium we've seen in more than a year, at just $3.40 over spot. Canadian maples are also IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order this special or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're delighted to have this returning guest every week for our market weekly update from Andy Schechtman, the CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metals. He's joining us again this Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. Andy, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Uh, Good to be here. Sorry about the birds in the background. I appreciate your flexibility. Done again, uh, duty called, sort of impromptu, and uh, rather than not come on for our weekly update, as brief as they are sometimes, I figured I would just cut out of my meeting and step outside and chat with you. So again, thanks for your flexibility and letting me do this. Appreciate that. And, and you know, the, the tropical birds aren't a problem. If I hear an alligator growling at you, I think, you know, we'll have to get you, give you a chance to run away first, and then we'll talk. Actually, you cannot run an alligator, so forget that strategy. Uh, wanted to ask you a couple of questions that have come up recently from viewers specifically submitting them ahead of your arrival. Uh, one, which uh, I know you've had some involvement with in the past and probably have some perspective on, is people looking to start trying to use precious metals more actively in their life. Uh, I think you're going to talk to us about some states that are taking official action in that regards, but this is for ordinary people who want to just start transacting in gold and silver. One way that they're asking us about is, are there any legitimate companies that are helping people who want to use a in ordinary transactions throughout their day, maybe with a debit card type uh, mechanism of being able to transact on their underlying asset of physical gold and silver in that manner to make it convenient even before society wakes up and even before vendors start you know accepting gold or silver directly for payment is there a way to do it in the current environment oh it's interesting i know that gold money always used to offer a gold mastercard and i i uh, i remember talking to some folks that i knew that used to work there this was a few years back and they said they issued lots of them but no one ever used them uh, or very few people actually ever use them. And maybe it's the, the reluctance of, of people who are investing in, in gold and silver to sell it for everyday uses um, when there are other means of, of, of utilizing or paying something off without, without selling your gold. I've often wondered, does that represent a taxable event when you are selling your gold to fund your MasterCard? Does that mean you're obviously you're selling it, you're paying capital gains taxes. Is it is it practical to own gold and have such a digital footprint? Um, I, all of these questions, I guess, are valid. So yes, I'm sure there are. I, if I'm not mistaken, I even think one gold has something along these lines of um, some sort of a credit card, MasterCard, Visa card tied to your gold holdings, but I'm old school, done again, I'm old school in many ways. And uh, the way that I look at life and the way that I look at owning precious metals. And to me, it is the antithesis of what we want to do with our gold and silver. Our daily living expenses should not be utilized with our precious metals holdings unless it is required. For me, the money that is after we pay our daily living expenses should be set aside in things like gold and silver and minimizing your digital footprint in a world that is dominated by loss of privacy and and, uh, increased litigation. It just seems that having 
less of a footprint digitally with our precious metals, to me anyway, it seems like a prudent deal. So yes, there are companies out there that offer it, but I would ask people to uh, think hard about that before they go down that road. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because uh, I think it stems from this consternation that people have given that we've had a couple generations now where silver and gold have not been, from a practical standpoint, uh, really practiced as legal tender. It, that's how it was forever in the past, but uh, now people actually scratch their heads and say, how would I get rid of it when the time came? How would I actually use it? In my, I, can't, I can't take it down to the grocery store today and use it, there, therefore how will I ever use it? And it's a fair question to ask how they would be able to tap the value of their metals for purchases of necessity should that need arise. But the main point of it being a store of value um, is is not to be missed. And that's that's the main point. I mean, it's, it's like people who in the past have had, uh, they put their money into land or whatever. Uh, you don't automatically expect that you're gonna be using that for daily transactions. But it certainly is possible uh, directly is the other option is through you know hand to hand at the farmers market etc or direct trades with others but this way they they want to be able to if they needed to tap that value and, and you're saying yes there are legitimate companies out there that are still providing that service but yeah there are but even still you know i mean no one thinks that way with their bond portfolio or the stock portfolio you don't walk to you don't walk to a super value with you know, a, a bearer bond or a share of Apple. So, it, you know, I think that, yes, it provides you that hand-to-hand -hand type of privacy and liquidity if you own it physically, certainly. And I think people, you know, there are a lot of people who, who are seeing what's happening to this country who want to use precious metals or think about using precious metals in that event. But in that event, will we even be using credit cards? I'm not sure. But look, we live in a world where Social Security, just the, the deficit in Social Security just went from 71 to $75.9 trillion, a trillion seconds ago being 31,688 years ago. So for people who are trying to be or, or be their own retirement account, be their own bank, be their own insurance company, it's valid. I get it. They want to store their money in metals and be able to tap into it and access it. It makes sense. I get it. Um, but I don't know that it's the best way to do it. I mean, you can always liquidate the metal that you have and use the cash um, or apply it towards, you know, your visa bill. So I guess all I'm simply saying is, is that if you're looking at gold and silver as something that gives you an exodus from the matrix, putting it back into the matrix may not be the best plan and might actually cause a little more undue attention than is needed. But when you talk about legal tender, you know, it's interesting. We talk about the reclassification of gold by the Bank of International Settlements. We talk about the repatriation of gold by so many of the European banks. We talk about the acquisition of gold by the very, very big, powerful banks who bought more gold last year than at any time since 1967. We're seeing a trend globally, but now, lo and behold, we're seeing a trend here in the United States, where Wyoming just passed the bill that made it through their Senate, creating uh, gold and silver as constitutional money. Once again, the deviation from the Constitution by calling currency money is at one point was considered treason, at least by the Constitution. It was only supposed to be issued in species gold and silver. And we're going back that way, or some states are, where, where Wyoming um, is is trying to hedge against exposure to the dollars that are, are are being debased. And now not only do they have to, in this bill, have at least 1% of the state's assets uh, in gold and silver, they want to use it in terms of um, payment for all debts, public and private. And the same thing is also happening in the state of Missouri. So between Wyoming and Missouri, on top of states like Utah, you are seeing um, a move back in that direction. In fact, Kansas just recently introduced Bill HB 2405, eliminating capital gains on precious metals and proposing they be used for legal tender valued at spot plus premium. And it's interesting, all three states in their verbiage mentioned spot plus premium. I found that to be very interesting. But, you know, what you are seeing um, as a result of the 
horrific mismanagement of the dollar, the increased inflation, um, and you know the debasement of the currency for for the citizens of these states. God bless these 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 senators and, and that are coming forward and um, and reintroducing gold and silver as money as it should be in its rightful place. And you know, every journey requires a step and this is the step in the right direction. And you know, I think as a sidebar too, Dunnigan, we often talk about that one half of 1% allocation. Um, and I've often hoped that the central banks buying and the commercial banks buying and the, and the sovereign wealth funds buying and the family offices buying those entities that are draining the exchanges would have a material impact on the, retail demand, but yet it doesn't because that information is so hidden from the mainstream's eye. You have to listen to Liberty and Finance and other stations to hear that. And while you have a very hybrid following, we still represent but the pimple on the elephant's rear end. And so when you see not only all of these international entities and these family office entities and the commercial bank and, and sovereign wealth fund entities looking at gold very differently, accumulating it, uh, repatriating it, that's great. But when you see the states taking a step forward in the right direction, look, maybe it will only take one more year of double-digit losses in the 60-40 split stock bond portfolio that everyone in this country who has a 401k administrator or a pension fund or most money managers employ. You know, how much more can people take in terms of uh, of the the deterioration of their portfolio before they look to an alternative. And maybe, just maybe, it'll be the states of Utah, Missouri, Wyoming, and Kansas that light a fuse under that one half of 1% and put what should be a proper allocation in people's minds to a hedge uh, against a currency that is being eviscerated in terms of its purchasing power and its status in the global landscape. Yeah, and we've also seen attention at the national level. Uh, certainly, there's been uh, bills introduced to eliminate uh, sales taxes and that sort of thing at the state level, but also making those legal tender at the state level. But also, we've seen at the national level moves by, for example, Representative Mooney from uh, Virginia uh, about reinstating gold and silver uh, and make, putting them in their proper place. Uh, as full first class legal tender uh, and not to be treated as something where you, yeah, you have to pay a sales tax, you have to pay a capital gains tax, et cetera. Uh, any further thoughts on that at the national level beyond the state level? Well, no, I mean, and, and that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at is, well, you know, it's interesting. Yes. I, I did an inter interview at um, the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference with Michelle McCory from Kitco, and she asked me some very challenging questions and told me she was going to do so at the onset of our discussion. Um, and, you know, we went through my whole narrative of what's happening with the Shanghai Corporation Organization, with the BRICS, with the Belt Road, and, and, and the de-dollarization and the move away from the dollar. And the question that she asked me was, what could change the outcome of the de-dollarization. Could it be Russia losing the war? And I thought about it and thought, well, you know, I don't know if that would do it because 80% of the world is still trading with them. The sanctions that we imposed upon them really didn't have the intended consequences. Most of the world is not sympathetic to the Western cause or a good portion of it, evidently. And I thought more and more about it. And I thought, well, maybe the International Monetary Fund. And when you look at the report that just came out, by the International Monetary Fund, which is which is a group of uh, north of 150 countries from around the world that was uh, developed at Bretton Woods, where the United States has veto power and a very large percentage of influence. The report was titled something to the extent gold, a barbarous re or an international reserve, a barbarous relic no more. We are beginning to see more and more talk of gold in its proper place as money. So while Representative Mooney has certainly been a beacon of, of, of light in, in what has been a very, you know, very, very dark period of time for precious metals in terms of their allocations nationally, he is shining what is a, a flashlight, if you will, on the problem. 
when you look at states like this, when you look at uh, commercial banks, sovereign wealth funds, central banks, and now the International Monetary Fund, we are beginning to see, I think, a, you know, like they say, sometimes you know, history doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. We are seeing, I believe, the the understanding that you can only you can only fool people for so long before they catch on to the issues of fiat currency and governments who have always chosen inflation over austerity. Uh, and you must have some sort of a tether to sound money. And I believe that, you know, that that is a realization that is coming. And let's hope for all of our sakes, because I said to her, the only thing that I could see reversing this trend would be through the International Monetary Fund that the United States and the conglomerate of countries that comprise the IMF come out with a Western gold-backed digital currency before the BRICS do, and or in conjunction with. And when you see the IMF issue a report, first of all, remember in 2020, they wanted a new Bretton Woods. We talked about that on your show a lot back then, and I thought that was very interesting. This was a group that was formulated at Bretton Woods. They want a new system. And now they're saying gold is no longer a barbarous relic. Well, maybe, just maybe, there's your back door where the West beats to the punch the group that is talking about, openly talking about, whether it be the Shanghai Corporation Organization, as Alistair McLeod so eloquently talks about, or the BRICS nations that I've been talking about with less eloquence than Alistair just common sense that I think one of the two or both will issue some sort of a reserve currency or settlement currency that is pegged to sound money. Uh, and if you want to win a war, it doesn't have to be done with weapons and, and, uh, and missiles. It can be done monetarily and no better way to destabilize the West than to issue a currency that is transparent and tied to something rather than a system that is anything but transparent and backed by debt instruments in a country that seems to be going deeper and deeper and deeper into debt each day. It was interesting, too, when you mentioned the states that are passing these laws, uh, legal tender and payment of uh, debts, public and private laws for gold and silver, that they're mentioning the price, the value of gold and silver as spot plus premium. That raises the question of how reflective the spot price is of the actual intrinsic value in the mind of the uh, market at the moment or not. And uh, there was a question raised by a viewer for you from that came out of a presentation by Jeffrey Christian at Rick Rule's recent silver investing boot camp where Jeffrey Christian was talking about some central myths that drive the behavior of silver's investors, myths in his view. Uh, one of them is that gold and silver prices are suppressed. And the reason I bring that up is because that would be a reason to talk about the difference between spot price plus premium if in fact the spot price is not reflective of of the true um, natural behavior of the market uh, can you talk to us about that topic whether you see gold and silver prices being suppressed as a myth or as a reality and um, help people unravel that from from your side you know i'm going to try to be a gentleman because i don't have anything against jeffrey christian other than i think he's doing a disservice to the industry to speak that way and you know, the fact that J.P. Morgan paid a $920 million fine for suppressing the market, for spoofing the market. The fact that I would challenge anyone to find the work of Dimitri Speck, who is a brilliant chartist, who has, in one of his charts that I used to use quite frequently in my presentations, where he would shove 10 years worth of data into a global uh, 24 hour chart of gold and silver. He took 10 years worth of data and made it into one chart. And what you would see unequivocally when all of that data was put in there was that at the AM fix and the PM fix, the market goes straight down, no more so than the PM fix, which goes straight off a cliff every single day, at least in terms of a cumulative average on 10 years, the market would leave London at the PM fix and get smashed as it hit into New York. And then once it got to New York, it would slowly work its way up and, and up through Asia and it would rinse, wash and repeat. The market has been suppressed for so long. It's ridiculous. 
the largest concentrated short position on any commodity traded on the COMEX market is in silver. It is, it is, I think, absolutely laughable for people to claim that the gold and silver market trade freely. That is not true. And, and shame on Jeffrey Christian for, for using his position to say that. And, and I think that um, it's almost not even worth wasting one's breath on to to say that gold and silver are not manipulated. They are probably the most manipulated markets on the planet. And the reason for that is the term Gibson's paradox, which is the inverse relationship between real interest rates and the price of gold. And if you have a, a two-decade period of suppressed interest rates, you have to kill the canary in the mine shaft, or the emperor is exposed for who he is, a frail little man behind the curtain, just like in The Wizard of Oz. And I think that uh, there, is, um, there is a truth in saying that the only way you can successfully manipulate a market over an extended period of time is to push it in the direction that it is going. And for the last several decades, no one wanted precious metals. They just wanted Western fiat currency. Those times are changing and the manipulation will be exposed. And anyone who was foolish enough to be on the short side of this trade as time goes on, will realize that very quickly, but shame on, on Jeffrey. He's a smart guy. He should be op more open-minded and he should not use a forum such as a place with Rick rule and his conference who, who is so esteemed and who you and I both admire so much to say that because it's true and it's been proven true in a court of law. And there's a million things that we could point to. If we talk for 10 hours, I could cite a million different things that would certainly call into question his assertion that, Oh, this is a myth. In fact, what he's saying is a myth quite to the contrary. When people look back to history, they need to look back no farther than their grandparents probably to find people who relied, uh, on gold and silver to be stores of value, to be their uh, savings account in their own pocket or or under the mattress or uh, wherever they wanted to preserve uh, value over time, over generations even, which certainly the, the dollar has not done. Um, it's interesting when, when the people in officialdom uh, say that people criticizing the Fed, criticizing the banking system, et cetera, are casting doubt uh, they're they're reducing the public's trust in this in institution that so much relies on the public's trust. Uh, I don't know. It just rem it reminds me of things we've encountered in other areas of our life recently, where it's like, well, they've been doing a fine enough job of giving re <laughs> public reason to mistrust a system that has destroyed ninety eight percent of the value of their currency since the foundation of the Fed. So it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. And for people who are wanting to protect their families' financial futures, that's our channel has all been all about protecting our families from real and present dangers. Um, you, for one thing, bring a weekly market special to us that allows people to do that in a very affordable way. Can you uh, clue us in on what's on the docket this week? Yeah, you know, there will come a time when almost every special that we offer will be gold. And, and I do think there will come a time when people need to transition to gold because the biggest money in the world is doing that. Now, granted, the biggest money in the world is doing the exact same thing with silver. And they are using contrary to what Mr. Christian says. And by the way, he says there's no silver deficit. Well, the Silver Institute would beg to differ, saying that there's close to, I don't know, 180 million ounce deficit this year. So... I'm not going to, to go back and forth with him on that, but I will simply say to you, uh, there will come a time when you realize that we should trade gold to silver, but right now there are a lot of entities and countries accumulating silver using its suppressed price to, to run cover for their accumulation, just like India, who accumulated 304 million ounces last year. And I look at silver right now as the most undervalued commodity on the planet. Regardless of how it's performed, it has been beaten down because of the manipulation of a couple of big banks on COMEX that I believe ultimately will uh, either do all they can to get out of this short position or be run over the same way Bear Stearns was when silver went from 12 to $21. And listening to Chris Marcus's interview with Bart Chilton will tell you, you know, Bart Chilton was the head of the CFTC. He would tell you that the that JP Morgan was manipulating the market. And you know, 
not to keep going back and forth over that, but it is a sense of aggravation to me where someone who is respected, as Mr. Christian would say that. In any case, the value right now, the value to be found is in silver. And it's because of the manipulation of the price that it is the buying opportunity of a generation. And this is why you're seeing the stockpiles globally being depleted at such, at, at such a copious pace. So uh, right now we have a 2022 silver maple leaves at $3.40 over the price of silver. It's the lowest I've sold them for in three years. And uh, we do have quite a few of them in stock. 2022 sealed mint boxes, tubes of 25, no minimum order. But look, um, I think, you know, you have to at some point trust your gut and realize that the system is not uh, freely traded until it is. This represents a subsidy and as good of a value in terms of investment from every matrix, supply, demand, um, uh, utility, um, the, the uh, global uh, stockpiles within the ground or the mining ratio, the ratio gold to silver, the historical price ratio, every way you measure it. I don't know that you can find a better value in an investment that is that is, in my mind, as conservative as it gets. So you have upside potential with the conservative investment. I look at it as generationally significant. So 2022 silver maple leaves for now, we're sticking with silver at $3.40 over the price of silver. No order minimum. And honestly, this is the best, probably the best silver value that we've seen. And it's a continuation of last week's promotion, the best silver value we've seen in in at least 36 months. Yeah, the other thing that comes to mind for me about that specific promotion of the Canadian silver maple leaves is that for people who are trying to decide which silver coin to consider, uh, it has a second only to the U.S. silver eagle at being the only other uh, North American uh, silver coin that's that's affordable. The Mexican Libertad is even more expensive than the Eagle. The Eagle uh, recently at nine dollars over spot premiums, and here you've got this at three forty. So for people who are looking for a North American, well recognized, well trusted, well respected government minted sil sovereign silver coin, uh, Canadian always seems to come uh, second in preference for the U.S. buyers, right behind the American, the U.S. mint. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also the purest silver coin in the world next to the kangaroo. They're the only two four nine fine mass minted silver coins. And um, look, you know, it's it's uh, it's a deal where I don't think that you could ask for a better value, because quite frankly, I'm shocked that the market has quieted down the way that it has. And it's it's the rhetoric of a soft landing that inflation is subsiding and I think that's all an illusion. OPEC just cut 2 million barrels of oil per day as 550,000 with Russia. You're going to see price of energy go up. You're going to see inflation go back up. You're going to see people realize that they're buying into the popular narrative that will do what it always does. It will bring the herd and lead them right into the pen. And as far as I'm concerned, you have to step away from that and realize you're being given a gift. Nothing material has changed today from what happened one or two years ago. In fact, you could argue things are getting much worse economically and geopolitically. And uh, not even talking about what's happening in, in the Ukraine and all of the ramifications of that. So yes, I, I think it's the most important time in history, at least in a very long time, because you're talking about a global sea change in world reserve status that is coming upon us. And I think protecting yourself de-dollarizing the way the biggest money in the world is doing and hedging your bet, if nothing else, uh, it is really very important. And honestly, done again, I don't see a better value anywhere that I look in silver. So the Canadian Maple Leaf, a pure silver coin in the world, uh, easily recognized anywhere in North America or anywhere in the world for that matter, is a darn good choice. I'm happy to be able to offer it. Well, Andy, we're grateful, as are our viewers, for your weekly market updates here. Uh, thanks for taking the time, even though you had some constraints imposed on your schedule today outside of your control. But appreciate you showing up and, and doing the weekly market updates despite that. And folks, so that you don't miss out a single episode with Andy or any of our other guests, make sure you go to libertyandfinance.com, enter your name, your email address, click Submit. And then make sure you confirm on the confirming email. Then you're in one in one email a day, giving our most recent 
interview and our weekly special and we don't share our mailing list with anybody so that's where it will be just for you from liberty and finance at libertyandfinance.com andy as always thanks for joining us on liberty and finance the pleasure is mine done again all the best to you and everyone out there will look forward to seeing you in person next tuesday miles franklin precious metals is one of america's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, Call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.